Ayo, what's up, fam? Yo, I'm smiling because I I do want to um, share something with you guys. It's kind of funny to me, and you know I'm into the fight business. You know I uh, let me turn this off. <laughs> well, <clears throat> let me just say this: that it is very interesting of what's going on with the uh, mixed martial arts these days, especially with the UFC. Um, there's been these two brothers I'm pretty sure you guys heard of, Jake Paul and what's the other brother's name? I forgot the other one. I don't know why when they, when they both have a fight, I remember one over the other one. This is the younger brother. I think he's the more wilder. He call, he call himself the... Um, the, uh, the, the, Dag Nabbit, what do he call himself again? Trouble, the troubled child, something, the troubled kid. Yeah, whatever, whatever he call himself. <laughs> One thing I can give him credit for, man, is that he has learned how to train with boxing. And he has gotten decent with it, decent enough to take on some guys in the MMA world. Wow. So I am very I am very intrigued by these these two guys. Especially one of the fellas, uh it, it's Jake Paul and what is his what is his big brother name? Good lord. How does I know they ain't gonna like that. But uh, hey it is what it is. I don't care. Um one thing, you know, when they first started off I didn't like neither one of them, be honest with you. And that was all a part of their 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 game or their uh their plan was to just get attention. And <laughs> they did it and they didn't do it the easy way. They literally had to take some they had to take some lumps in order to get the respect in the in the fight world. Cause these boys came from literally just YouTubing. That's it and disney or something disney and then youtube but this this young boy jake man he's he's why he snatched uh, mayweather's hat off that time that's what caught my attention when his brother was gonna fight him his brother was gonna fight mayweather and he comes up woofing at mayweather and snatches his hat talking about i got your hat and ran and uh one thing these boys are good at they are they are really good business guys when it comes to social media because anything that they do they know how to promote through social media which is great that's great because this is the new era things have changed things have changed of how you used to make money versus how people like make money now now you can become a pretty wealthy individual if you do well with, with uh, social media and back in the day, it was almost unheard of to do it that way. You had to go to college, you had to go to school, go to college, graduate, get into a field, learn the field, get into the, 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 the job itself, and then bam, you know, you work your way up the ladder this way. But now this, this social media thing has took a shortcut. There's a shortcut to all of that. Mainly it's a shortcut to the money. And these two boys have figured it out and they're pretty funny. Um, I mean, funny. Just, just I, I, I just subscribed to Jake Paul's channel uh, yesterday. I think it was yesterday, and today is Sunday, right? And all this time, I've been every time a fight comes up that he's gonna be in, I want to see it. Now, why do I want to see the fight? Why do I want to see him fight the YouTube guy fight? Well, he done shook up the fight world. That's why. You know, he done came in and he done took the trash talk. Not just that, that I got to, I mean, it don't matter who you are in the fight business. If you're just a fan, if you really love the fighters, then you want the best for the fighters. And this kid, these two boys here, with their uh, influential position in social media, uh, they're, they're influencers and they when they speak because they're rich they're rich so when they speak people are gonna listen got my attention and, and I'm telling you man I I didn't like these guys I wanted these guys to get hurt in that boxing ring but 
they surprise me because they put the work in. They're not just lip service, man. These boys um, put they put the work in, man. They doing the road work. They doing the ring work. They sparring. You know, you you may not have to believe that they're knocking everybody out in sparring. You know, uh, whatever they put up to make themselves look good is is how you run the business. You want your fighter to look good, and they know how to make themselves look good with social media, and they've done extremely well with this thing. Now, the Ty the, the Tyron Woodley fight. Oh my gosh! I mean, you. I mean, when 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 you talk about a fight like that, somebody like Tyron Woodley who was three world champion in his MMA thing. I, I was just so sure, cause I've seen Tyron fight before. And he he was a, a really good fighter, you know? And now I say, shoot, even though Jake Paul was a bit bigger than him, I still felt like Tyron Woodley would edge him out because that's, that's his background, fighting. Now, this proves the other myth about boxing. Now, the MMA have snuck up. Boxing, of course, was here for a minute. I just turned my reverb down because I, I keep hearing it in my ear. So, we um, we knew boxing way back when Jack Johnson was 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 boxing, you know, and and Dempsey and and all those guys, right, old time fellas. Boxing been around a long, long, long time. So now, here it is, this this, M this MMA thing done popped up. And then Dana White got a hold to the UFC. And however way he did it, but the way he did it was more beneficial to him than the fighters. And the fighters are not realizing that they, that they are not being paid top dollar for what putting their lives on the line as much as they do. And boxers are getting paid pretty, pretty reasonable amount of money, but of course, still not enough. Because when you put your life on the line for a, a particular career, you should be getting top dollar. You should be getting top dollar, you know. And if if you, um, for the most part, are not getting top dollar, then something is not right. You're putting your life on the line. Now, that goes the same with any dangerous profession it doesn't matter whatever the profession is if you're putting your life on the line you should get paid for it you know and and not just that that um you know let me uh that um there is you know let me hold on a second got my people back there just making all kind of noise man you know hold on a second I, i'm just doing the music again i want to finish this conversation because it's very important Something I feel that I, I definitely want to uh, want to share with you guys. Put that music on so you don't hear my people out there banging and clanging, right? Excuse me, I was thirsty. All right, so these two guys, the Paul brothers. I'm gonna just say that because I don't want to leave out the other one either because he fought. Mayweather and everybody thought and he was almost twice the size of Mayweather. Mayweather got a lot of heart uh, He relied on his skill to fight this boy and this boy was in shape The boy was training because if he wasn't Mayweather would have probably hurt him, you know, but um, Even if Mayweather just hurt him a little bit, you know that um, He was a big man. He's not a little guy uh, This guy the, the older Paul brother, he's not a small fella. He's, he, I think he walks around at about 180, 190 pounds. And Mayweather is just right in that 150, 60, somewhere in there, right? So anyway, <clears throat> anyway, that fight, I watched that fight. That was, that was an interesting fight, right? Um, did I, did I believe that, uh, the Paul brother, the older Paul brother did okay in that fight. Yeah, he didn't get knocked out. So yeah, yeah, he, he did okay with that, man. Um, Mayweather did his did his job, what he was supposed to do, you know? Fear no man, regardless his size, for the most part. And um, he did his thing, 
you know, uh, more uh, great power, great, great, uh, big up to uh, Mayweather and uh, big up to uh, the big old, the older Paul brother. I forgot that boy's name. And uh, yeah, it's irking me. I know I should look it up real quick so I can stop doing that, but I'm not. All right, but anyway, <clears throat> I like these guys now. I subscribe to their channel now. Um, it's only because they open my eyes to um, anybody, literally anybody, can get into boxing in any combat sport. And actually, if you train, if you train, you can literally make some something happen. Now they cut all the amateurs out. You see, th you know, this is the this is the shortcut era. You don't have to go through all of those steps to get to a particular goal these days. All you got to do now is apply yourself directly to the goal that you really want to get to from the beginning. So there still may be some homework to do because they had to do their homework with the training business in order for them to get in the ring in the first place. But all the amateur stuff, I guess they're getting their amateur stuff from the sparring matches that they're having. That's their amateur career for the most part. And uh, I think my people stopped clanging and banging. I think I can turn that down. But um, yeah, man. So this is what I want to do with you guys. I want to, I want y'all to hear this track that this young boy Jake Paul, them, <laughs> oh my goodness, <clears throat> them did for Dana White. He he put a disc, a disc um. Uh, song together this video together on Dana and Dana let me give you a word of advice man you know you you are who you are you did what you did uh, you made your money you're a wealthy individual you know uh, nobody can look at you and say that you have not done well in the business of fighting even if it is mixed martial arts the UFC but we'll tell you this also Mr. Dana White uh, everything, times change. Things have to be done differently as time change. So you may have to operate your business a little bit different and start thinking more of the fighter. Um, we get it. The majority of the pie goes to you and a lot of people who work for you. We understand all that. But the people are putting their lives on the line for fighting to keep you in the position that you're in, the wealthy position that you're in, then you may have to start reconsidering your contracts with your fighters if you want to keep your fighters. And, and, and if Bellator was to be paying them more, or boxing is paying them more, then that's more than likely I would suggest they go. And if, and if Jake Paul and his brother is, is in on having a union for the combat fighting or sports altogether, man... Dana, uh, you, 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 you are going to be like an old Don King in the fight biz. Because everybody's like, who, who the heck is Don King? He don't even matter no more. You're going to be like that like real soon. If you don't just go ahead and start renegotiating your contracts with your fighters. Because you're going to wind up having no fighters. Nobody is going to want to fight for you. You know what I mean? You're going to always have those loyal ones. Because I heard a guy who just heard the disc. Well, I'm going to play it in a minute. I know a lot of you already done heard it, but I want y'all to see my reaction to it, man, because it's interesting to even hear this stuff. And the boy ain't scared. <laughs> the boy ain't scared to uh, to be roasting. Uh, it seemed like it seemed like uh, my man. And you know, they even might be Republicans for all I know. You know what I mean? Uh, the Paul brothers, they might be. But uh, you know, I'll say this. If they are in, if they are trying to make a better way for the fighters, then I have to give them thumbs up, man. I got to give both of them thumbs up. You know what I mean? And all the other boxing promoters are going to have to follow their lead because the fighters, it's about the fighters. It's the fighters that's bringing you money. It's the fighters that's making you wealthy. It's the fighters that are keeping ESPN and and showtime and all them guys the sports part you know uh, of boxing up you know what i mean these fighters are 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 are, are, are fearless man and they go in there for for you know sometimes two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or maybe even less than that maybe fifty 
uh, maybe six hundred thousand. I don't know, but if 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 it's worth, that's my grandson, man. I got this. I got. I had two mics. Let me just go through this real quick. I got two mics. One of one. This mic right here is a dull sounding type mic. It's the cheapest one. The other one is more expensive, and that's the one that's picking up everything. And when I tell you everything, man, she was just, man, one of my peoples was out there doing some cooking, and she was just lining the, lining the thing with the aluminum foil. I heard the aluminum foil crackling all the way in here. I got to get that soundproof stuff up on my walls. But look, <clears throat> this is what I'm saying. Times change. Times change, y'all. Just like me, I had to change with the times. When my kids were growing up, I couldn't, I couldn't try to rule them the same way I used to. It just, things were different, man. If I wanted to be, if, if I wanted them to hear what I was saying and respect what I was saying, I had to kind of come to their level. And you had to back up, take a couple of steps back and remember you used to be young as well. So this, is, this goes out to Dana White, man. You gonna have to change up, uh, bruh. You can't keep running things like you've been running them. Things are different. Now you got these, these these Paul brothers on your neck. They on your neck, man. And, you, and the fighters are slowly realizing that these boys, they may be amateurs in this whole biz, but they're good business people. And they looking out for the who? The money makers. The real money makers. You know what I mean? That's the fighters. The athletes, man, they're looking out for these guys. They're trying to get them the biggest paychecks ever. And how can you say no to that? And then you got, like I was about to tell you, there was this one MMA guy. He very, very appreciative of what, what um, the, the money he's been given by Dana White and the UFC. That he's like getting down on, on, on Francis Uganyu. I hope you say his last name. That's my man, though, Francis. Um... Getting down on him about um, not fighting for the UFC anymore, you know, and then and he's not a big trash talker either, you know. Francis is not a big trash talker, but if you ask him a question, he's gonna answer the dagnabbit question. Somebody asked him about, you know, the, you know, the contract between him and Dana White in the UFC and all that. He fulfilled his last fights for the little bit of money that he got. He put his life on the line for that money again. And then he's not redoing the contract, you know, to stay in there. They say he's, he, he, he's, he's passing up $7 million. Okay, uh, maybe, maybe not. He might be able to negotiate somewhere else for more, you know, to put his life on the line like that every time he fights. So, um, man, I'm saying, you know, fighters, go, go for the money, man. That's, you know, you fought your way this far, you know, to be getting those... A uh, hundred and some odd thousand dollar checks and somebody, you know, I hear getting less than that, man. Getting fifty thousand dollar checks, twenty five thousand dollar, man. Look, uh, y'all not that dagnab is stupid. You know what I mean? To keep on fighting for somebody who ain't trying to look, for, look out for your better interests. Even though he's concerned about the fighter getting beat to a pulp and saying take him straight to the hospital after the fight. Yeah, okay. That's to avoid some daggone lawsuits, probably, and he's going to pay for that. All right, got you, you know. But how about paying these guys top dollar for what they do? Putting their life on the freaking line, somebody trying to beat them to death. Beat them to death, not just beat them. Beat them to unconsciousness. Beat them to a point that they can't even spell their name if you ask them on the canvas. The, ask them who they are after they done got their brains beat halfway in and stomped in. Ask them what their name is. They're not going to be able to recall that after the beating they've taken. You know, some of these guys. And they, they're pretty good athletes, man. But there's always somebody better. And, 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 and lucky shots happen all the time. There's more lucky shots in the MMA world than there are in boxing. Maybe. No. I ain't going to tell you that. In both combat sports... A lucky shot can happen from anybody. You could be losing the whole fight. All rounds. If you've got 10 rounds, you could be losing 9 rounds. And in the 10th round, you can throw a punch and knock your opponent out. And ask him what his name is, why he laid out on the canvas. He can't. He cannot be able to tell you that. 
That's a dangerous position to be in, to have your brain rattled like that. You know what I mean? These guys are taking all the risk. You hear me? Then let's, let's do it this way. The fighters are taking all the risk. All of the risk. Do y'all get it? Dana White, Dag Nabbit. Yeah, they taking all the risk, man. So, always try to negotiate a better contract with the, uh, with the fighters, man. The money makers. Always. Now, let's get to the fun part. <laughs> oh, Lord, I just had to do this, man. It was just, it was just, it was just like, Daryl, you got to say something. Say something, bro. Don't let this moment go by and you don't say nothing about this, 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 this video, man. But here it is. <laughs> All right, y'all ready? Listen to this, man. This is, this is some funny stuff. That's like propane. Yeah. Oh, are, are, are they gonna play the whole thing? Oh yeah, this is this is actually what I see. What he, it's like a mini movie or something. If you keep on winning, you could be rich like McGregor. Listen to him. So what about the long-term health care? Don't worry about that right now. Just sign on the dotted line. Listen, well, this no crap. Know who you are. That's cyborg, man. She fought a lot for him, man. That's actually her. This guy playing Dana they White. All the work. We make all the money. <laughs> That's exactly. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Look at him. Man, that's yeah. messed up. Surprise, motherfucker! We're tired of you treating fighters like this. You uh. greedy bald bitch. Look at your board. <laughs> Raise pay-per-view prices and pay fighters less. Oh Sweat. snap! It's time to put an end to this shit, Dana. Oh, he hit him in the face with the contract. Oh, I don't know what he, oh, maybe it was a bat. <laughs> Listen. What? Oh, y'all got to excuse me on this, y'all. Y'all know I don't cuss, but he's cussing. First of all, Masvidal, you ain't rich. They even got the words running across the bottom of the screen. Another guy I didn't like, man. Conor McGregor. He's a little bully, man. Damn. Oh, Dana White. Bump Dana. Bump Dana White. They got that money. Them Paul boys. I don't even like these guys, but look at me, man. You call him a scumbag. I passed my drug test and you went silent. I'm keeping my foot on your neck until you tap, bitch. Stop raising your pay per view prices on the fans and not paying fighters more. Greedy, right. old, lonely, bald bitch. That was it. It was short but sweet, though, man. It was short but sweet. <laughs> there it is. That was his diss. Uh, video man and in that short little video he had packed in a whole lot of stuff 
Not that he said a whole lot of words, but the words he did say had a whole lot of meaning to him. You know what I mean? So, hey, big up to uh, the Paul brothers. Jake Paul, good job. Good job fighting. I got to give you that, man. I ain't even like this dude, man. I'm telling you, but I like him now. It's funny how people come into your good graces, man. They prove themselves. And I said, if he does not beat uh, Tyron Woodley, that he wouldn't have had my respect. And I am a big time uh, boxing fan. You know, not that I know it all in boxing, but I, I also am a boxing coach as well. So, yeah, I'm a big boxing fan. And Tyron Woodley was a, a really good test for him, man. Now, not that he did great. He still got a whole lot of improvement, you know, to make. But if he gonna stick into that boxing business, he's actually on his way to being a really good fighter. Now, when he start fighting uh, uh, boxers who have been boxing for a while, that is in his weight class. That's where he's gonna run across some problems. It don't matter because he has no amateur background. Only background he's got is three years in boxing, and that's right there. He built all that around him. Him and his brother now. Now they're good athletes. They're already proven that, and they're tough. They're tough fellas, man. They're proven that as well. And uh, but it's 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 about that time now to be tested with a real boxer. Now if he just going after the MMA guys. Uh, Silva will probably be the guy that he should box because Silva is a professional boxer himself and he's an MMA fighter as well. So uh, Anderson Silva would probably be the guy to fight for either one of those two brothers. Uh, if they do well with him, now this is a this is the biggie man. If they do well with Anderson Silva, then y'all start y'all should start finding some really good fighters like that fury boy uh, uh tyson fury's cousin i found out that i think that's a cousin that boy looked like he had been boxing uh is he great no but it would be a great test for either one of the paul brothers right so they go hand in hand because uh the older tall brother i mean mm, paul brother is a bit bigger taller and he packs on more muscle but it's jake paul the one who who got a lot of heart that that boy got a lot they both got a lot of heart i ain't taking nothing away from either one of them man as far as their heart concerned they bold they rich they got heart and they seem to be putting their daggone money where their mouth is you got to respect that so family that's my take on it man the paul brothers dag nabbit I'll get it when I, when I, man, look, all I can say is, yo, man, uh, Paul Brothers, yo, hey, hold on, Paul Brothers, hey, Paul Brothers, can y'all hear me, can y'all hear me, throw me some of that money, man, yo, Paul Brothers, throw me some of that dagnabbit money, man, you know what I mean, I can, I, I can get something going on my end, too, huh, 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 <laughs> well, yo, all I could say is, man, it's funny how things work. You know, uh, you got your favorites and you got your not so favorites. And it's not many people. George Foreman did it for me as well. As uh, uh, when I say change my mind about him as a person or as a fighter. Because when George Foreman back in his youth was fighting Muhammad Ali, and Ali was the, the people's champion. And everybody loves Muhammad Ali. But anytime anybody had to fight Muhammad Ali, they automatically was dubbed the uh, the bad guy, you know. And George Foreman was a quiet man back in his youth. He ain't had a whole lot to say. He just let them big old hands take care of the talking for him. And George was a, a a rough, rough, quiet type guy. He didn't have a lot to say. You know what I mean? And uh, when he fought Muhammad Ali, didn't like. Him didn't like him I was cheering for Muhammad Ali to beat the brakes off this guy but then after that George like rebuilt himself and his personality started to come out in his older ages and he was a very loving person God-fearing man 
Still kind of quiet, didn't have a whole lot to say. But he promoted himself in the way that he did, Big George. You know what I mean? And then he came up with the George Foreman grill. Remember that? I got two of those. And I was like, yeah, okay. He made, you know, look, he, he named all his boys George. George 1, 2, and 3, and 4, I think. I think it's four of them. But all I can say is this. Much respect to him, man. I love that guy now. I still love Muhammad Ali down to his last days. And I think after Muhammad Ali beat George is when I started to fall in, you know, I was about to say fall in love. What in the world? That's when I start liking George more. <laughs> Wake up, boy. Yeah, right? <laughs> and, uh, but I just said that to say it's strange. It's strange how um, things happen within us when it comes to if you really listen, give a person a chance. You know what I mean? And I gave George Foreman a chance after he fought my main fighter, right? Uh, and these Jake Paul brothers, the Paul brothers, I'm giving them that chance as well. Why? Because to me, they prove that they're made, they're tough. They're built tough. There's no doubt. Can they, can they be the best in the boxing world? I don't know about that. But I will say where they are and their experience in the business, they're doing okay. They got a good running track right now. And if they pick their fighters the right way along the way, eventually that picking thing, that cherry picking is going to run out. And you're going to have to fight a worthy, worthy, worthy fighter. And if you ever can beat that top-notch worthy fighter, not old Mike Tyson. I mean, he ain't that old. You know, I'm way older than him. But I'm just saying, Mike Tyson, even if you get past Mike Tyson, if his brother gets that fight with Mike and get past Mike, and that's if Mike don't go soft on him, because Mike liked those boys, you know? I can see why, but Mike Tyson liked those boys. He let it be known, you know? They're wild, they're charismatic. They, um, I think they get high. And Mike, you know, he like anybody who get high, I think. If you're gonna sit up there and smoke his weed, you know, and eat mushrooms and all that nonsense. Yeah, man, he, he down with you, you know what I mean? He like you, you know, but outside, I mean, that's not true either about Mike. Mike Mike is a funny one, man, you don't know. Shoot, I don't think I wanna even hang out with nobody like him. I don't, I mean, he cool, man. I, he, uh, I don't know, man, I'll be too, too on my guard, bring my gun with me and everything, cocked and loaded, man, just in case he wanna try to cut up. Never know. Something might say something to piss him off. Now you're gonna sit there and be quiet. And be like, and put your hand on your gun, cause Mike's about to freak out, y'all. About to, to put a cap in him and run up out of here. You know what I mean? Don't play with him. He ain't nobody to be playing with. You laugh and joke one minute, next minute he about to knock you out. <laughs> Not happening, right? But Paul brothers, big thumbs up. Wait, big thumbs up. Cause y'all doing an awful lot. And if y'all pull this thing off, man, with the fighters, man, shoot. I don't know. I might even get a tattoo of you on my dad on, on me somewhere. <laughs> Tyron got one on his finger. I'll put one visible for people. Now I ain't gonna put it on my finger though, but I, I'm in it for the fighters, man. I, I'm if you if you trying to look out for the fighters, man, to make sure that they get paid and protected, man. You, you the man, both of you. So, you, you got my vote. You dig? And on that note, y'all, I'm out of here. Listen, this is I Real Be Free. And remember what I tell you, always treat people like you want to be treated. And it'll come back around because it has for me. One love, y'all. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. I think I gotta go. I keep hitting this thing and it don't even stop. Let's try it again. I'm out of here. I gotta go, gotta go, gotta go.